E3 is back after a year hiatus. There are a few really good things to talk about, but for a moment, let's talk about what we didn't like. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, the 10 most disappointing things at E3 2021. Starting off at number 10, it was a huge disappointment that Sony skipped the show. Now, this is an obvious one, but despite the fact there wasn't a show at all last year, that actually wasn't the first year Sony wasn't around. They haven't been at an E3 since 2018, and has instead been doing these little Sony state of play showcases that to be fair are really cool but we didn't get one of those either. Now, there is a rumor that there's gonna be a new state of play in one or two weeks after E3, which actually makes a lot of sense, waiting for the dust to clear and then coming back in and going, hey, remember all the boring stuff at E3? Now, we don't have any of that here at PlayStation. Separating themselves from the pack, that could be a strategy, but at the same time, you can't really predict. It has been super noticeable that they haven't been there a single time since way back when in 2018, though. At number 9, the Babylon's Fall trailer was, well, disappointing. Like, people were really hyped for this one back when it was originally announced. Platinum Games working on a new IP set in a strange dark fantasy world sounds really interesting. And we got to see a trailer, which was a Babylon fail. It really deflated a lot of people's expectations. It's gonna be a live service game, which is something that hardcore fans of the traditional Platinum Games single player style not happy about. I'm not happy about. I don't know if there's anybody who's like, yeah, a live service game but for a certain segment of gamers live service is a dirty dirty word and a venn diagram for platinum fans and live service game haters it's definitely just a circle also it looks kind of ugly and boring most of the trailer was sweeping shots of barren looking environments just it doesn't look up to platinum's usual high standards i mean we're talking about the people who made near automata which is one of the most celebrated games the last like five years or so and they're basically making something to compete with Marvel's Avengers. I guess Destiny 2 is so loved for all of the live service stuff that they do, like they gotta get on on that. Why? And number eight, we did get a Starfield trailer, finally, but we were very disappointed when we did not get much from the Starfield trailer. Like, it didn't reveal much at all. And outside the trailer, it's not like they revealed a ton of concrete details that allow us to put two and two together with visuals we saw in the trailer. No, we understand its art design a little bit, and there's kind of a hint at some gameplay elements at a very low level, but the trailer was so vague and we got a specific release date that feels weird it's like if way back when they gave us that first cyberpunk trailer that it was accompanied with a release date like one and a half years in the future just a cg trailer with no gameplay in it, it i mean it's not completely analogous to that but it's close at least we got something i don't want to act like i'm upset we saw something about starfield it's a very interesting title and i think that it's going to be very cool when it does come out but it does have the potential to be a big disaster too and I would love to know stuff that shows for sure that it isn't. At number seven, there was a pretty big lack of AAA game announcements, which is really weird for the biggest gaming event of the year, especially the triumphant return of one that last year forced everyone not to enjoy. Yes, the labor forest was sort of pulled back a bit by the pandemic, but that doesn't mean they don't have plans that they can talk about. Anyway, here's some major games that just didn't show up at all, and that sucks. Uh, first, Ghostwire Tokyo and Deathloop. These are probably because they're PS5 exclusives, or at least launch exclusives. But particularly Deathloop feels weird that we saw nothing about. Same goes for Forspoken. Um, Vampire the Masquerade Bloodline seems like a really glaring omission, because that feels like it should be a little further along than maybe not being mentioned at all. Uh, there was Gotham Knights, Suicide Squad, Hogwarts Legacy. Um, WB Games only focused on Back for Blood, which to be fair, that is a big event. The developers of Left 4 Dead giving us a new game in that style is very much a big deal, but the only big deal Warner Brothers Games has going, it's weird. They do have a major restructuring going on behind the scenes because Warner Media and Discovery 
Discovery are merging, but it seems like they probably could have done something. Some new games did get announced, like Contraband and Redfall, and even Outer Worlds 2, but we didn't actually get any in-game footage for any of those. And the stuff that we did get shown, like Forza Horizon and Elden Ring, it was fantastic, but that's not enough. At number six, Rare's new game, Everwild, actually didn't show up at all because it's apparently being totally rebooted and will not be out until at least 2024. So, I mean, it makes sense that they wouldn't show us a ton of it, but it was one of the more intriguing reveals from last year and maybe would be cool to hear more about, even if it's being rebooted. The graphics that we saw last year were gorgeous, really interesting, very stylized, but we have nothing new about it. I mean, I will say at least we did get a pretty cool crossover announcement with Sea of Thieves and Pirates of the Caribbean. Honestly, I think that that is like exactly what that franchise needs because I love Sea of Thieves, the gameplay, but sometimes the structure isn't enough for me. Having an actual like embedded story within it as well as actual characters, I think could be pretty darn good. Again, I haven't really played it a whole lot since it came out, but that definitely piqued my interest. At number five, Razer had a conference for some reason. I just, I cannot imagine why they really needed to do that. Um, the things that they showed off at the Razer conference were a laptop, a laptop charger, which, come on, the big reveal of a laptop charger. Ooh. They showed off a monitor, and they also showed up this light-up pandemic mask that looks, I mean, ridiculous is an understatement for how it looks. It is way over the top. Nobody actually needs that. Uh, and it took them an hour and 41 minutes to do this. Like, they spent multiple minutes announcing a laptop charger. That's so weird. To be fair, at least the Razer Blade 14 is cool. It's using an AMD CPU, and that's pretty big for them. But, I mean, if you assume that this conference was even necessary at all, it could have been a half hour. At number four, Capcom didn't really show anything new in their conference. Like, they had a conference, but they didn't have Dragon's Dogma 2 at their conference, which is, you know, kind of what everybody wanted. They said that they're working on Resident Evil Village DLC, which, cool, but they didn't reveal anything about it. Like, we got no information. They just basically said, oh yeah, we're an office who continues to have workers in it doing things. Cool. I didn't suspect that. That was sarcasm, I did. Mostly they just showed games they've already revealed without offering anything new in terms of information about them. Like Dragon's Dogma 2 has had leaks and rumors for years. People want to see it at this point, but it just didn't show up. Also, Resident Evil Revelations 3 is a widely rumored game that did not get announced, and it's kind of like, why did you guys have a conference? It seems like you could have not, and people would have actually felt better. At number three, Square kind of shadow dropped the demo for The Stranger of Paradise Final Fantasy Origins, which we don't actually know a whole hell of a lot about yet, despite the fact that we have a demo. And part of that was because the demo was corrupted. It did not work properly. You could not launch it. Now, they were responsive. This is a good thing, and they did fix it, but it does kind of deflate the whole surprise announcement shadow drop of a demo of a supposedly pretty big title when it does doesn't work. It did inspire some pretty great memes though. Lots of the word chaos printed over screenshots from the game. At number two, Take Two revealed literally nothing at its conference. And when I say literally nothing, they basically didn't talk much about games even. It was more like an industry panel discussion about workplace. It was more something that works for like internal education. Like we heard nothing about like Grand Theft Auto 6, no new Bioshock, no new anything from any Take Two property. I don't know why they even showed up to be honest. And finally, at number one, there is still no Bayonetta 3 or Metroid Prime 4 news. Bayonetta 3 was officially announced on December 7th, 2017 at the Game Awards, and we have not heard anything about it other than Platinum saying development is going well and that they have nothing to announce at the moment, which sucks. That's a series that is beyond fun to play, and we're all kind of expecting something, but no, 
Metroid Prime 4 was actually announced earlier at uh, the Nintendo Spotlight of E3 2017 on June 13th of that same year. It was rumored that Bandai Namco was working on the game at first rather than Retro Studios who made the first three games, which was eventually proven to be true. In 2019, Nintendo released a development update video where they straight up said that the game wasn't living up to Nintendo standards and they completely reset the development of the game, which which is good because Bandai Namco making a game that doesn't live up to Retro Studio standards sucks, but it was also a good piece of news because we found out Retro was returning to the game. But again, nothing new since then. It's been two years and there has been no additional news since that update. There have been a lot of job listings and positions filled at Retro, but that's all we know. Nothing public has been announced. Now they did briefly mention Metroid Prime 4 before they revealed a different Metroid game, which is called Metroid Dread, which I have to say I am very not disappointed about, so it's good to leave on a high note. It's a new side-scrolling game like the originals, and frankly, we've needed one of those for a long time. Still, want to know what's up with Metroid Prime 4. That's all for today, though. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. The best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription, so click subscribe. Don't forget to enable all notifications and as always thank you very much for watching this video i'm falcon you can follow me on twitter at falcon hero we'll see you next time right here on game ranks